Hey guys, if you like this content, I would greatly appreciate it if you guys liked the video and subscribed to my channel. It helps uh, make these videos worth it going forward. What's up guys, I'll coin Chipper here with the Crypto Market Review. As always, this is not financial advice. I'm not an expert to do your own research. Today, I just want to review Bitcoin and see um, if this overall current price action looks like 2019. There's a lot of uh, similarities and there's also a lot of differences. So uh, let's just get to it. Uh, 2018 was a long, long uh, downtrend for Bitcoin. We just had lower highs and lower lows and it was just like a um, year of nasty downtrend. What we saw significant um, during 2018 was we saw a lot of these bounces that uh, happened mostly off the 6K area where price would hit 6K, bounce, hit 6K again, have a lower high, hit 6K, hit lower high, lower high, lower high. And eventually the floor fell through to where price went from uh, 6K to 3K, hit a multi-month uh, accumulation period, and then it started to move up again. So um, as you can see here, this is the 6K floor that happened. And um, again, once the support area fell out, um, price nuked another 50% went down and chopped around for several months and then it had a strong strong run in 2019 april 2019 from 3k all the way to uh, nearly 14,000. and there's a lot of people talking about um, this current run where we had this run in bitcoin uh, where price pretty much had a vertical accumulation and did not give many pullbacks and just kept going strongly um, I'm going to go first look at the price action from 2018 and then I'll take a look at the current price action that we s we're seeing now. Um, there's one important key difference in my opinion from the environment and this is like a really big one uh, is that the overall macro environment is, is very different from 2018 uh, to where it is now. So what I mean by that is that there's a lot there's a lot more free money in the system, 0% uh, rates and uh, Whereas these days, there's just like, you know, the macro environment is just very, very different. Um, lots of leverage washed from the system and and just high uh, rates all around. So it's, it's very different in that regard. So I think that that's also going to affect Bitcoin, which is still a risk on asset. But um, other than that, we can just take a look at the charts and see what what they say. So as I said, um, 6K floor back in 2018, price kept bouncing, had lower high, lower high, lower high, and then it fell through. And then price kind of grinded up near this um, area around 6K. Um, this was actually the 5K level where price grinded around here. And me as, uh, you know, still learning how to trade back in 2018, 2019, I kept assuming that the 6K level was going to provide very strong uh, resistance, right? You, you think that, oh, super strong um, support all throughout 2018. This should provide um, resistance. Instead, price blitzed on through um, this 6K floor area and really didn't pause until almost uh, 8 to 9K. Now, is this really what we're seeing right now? Uh, you know, I don't really know, but there are some parallels that we can see from 2019. Uh, and as I said before, this, uh, this really there weren't any pullbacks. And if you look at it back in 2019, you got these like negative 10% dips that were, um, that were really all that price gave you like nine, 9.7% or 10%, 11%, really price didn't give these great opportunities and didn't give this perfect retest that you usually see. So normally, um, you know, this was the former high around 4K. Price had this um, God candle where it went from 4K all the way up to nearly five and a half. And um, price never retested that level. Price never went back down. Uh, it never, you know, big move up and then it came back down. It wasn't a clean retest, it just kept going. So, you know, that's, I think, a frustrating thing when you are on the sidelines and you are seeing price blitz up and you don't see any sort of retest. That can be really frustrating if you just have a lot of cash waiting and you see everyone else getting rich uh, without you. So let's take a look here at the current price action. Uh, you know, what do we see? Contextually speaking, the overall downtrend from uh, 2022 was just, quite a bit different in my opinion than 2018. Uh, 2018, as I said before, you saw, had that big move with lots of bounces off the same floor of 6K. For 28, or I'm sorry, 2022, you really just saw like kind of a down only market where 
you had these slight bounces, but there weren't really many significant ones. For instance, you did see one back in um, kind of this February 2021 area. Um, you know, really, the downtrend really started, you know, kind of top of the market, end of no, uh, beginning of November 21. But, you know, you saw a slight bounce from 33 all the way up to nearly 50 back in January and February uh, of 2022. But you didn't really see these significant bounces off a, a single level. You just saw this slow grinding, lower high, lower low. And, you know, you saw this consolidation back in May, too, where price never even had some sort of lower high. It just grinded here and then it went lower. Um, so where are we at right now? We saw that price chopped around for several months. And from June all the way to uh, mid-November, price consolidated at this uh, 18K, 18.5K floor. Price chopped around for quite some time. And I actually strongly believe that price would have done pretty well uh, in the short term had it not been for FTX. FTX event went from uh, 21K or so all the way down to 15. That was a strong uh, move down. Lots of um, you know people got wiped out during that situation. And um, but with the overall macro environment as it was at that time in, in November, I do believe that actually had FTX not happened, I think that, you know, we would have seen price go back up. But is what it is. You know, um, it's better in the long run. Uh, not going to get into that now. You could maybe compare this overall 18.6K um, area to the 6K level that we saw back in 2019, where price, you know, bounced off this level for several months. And it was, you know, creating this, you know, these lower highs all around. You could mark these lower highs um, all throughout this range. But but it never fell through. And then, it, you know, obviously it did. It went from, you know, this 18K area all the way, 18.5K area all the way down to 15K, 15.5. And now it broke strongly past that floor and is making its way to this range high area. Now, um, what is this going to look like? Like, you know, is this just going to keep going all the way up? It's really hard to say. Um, this is a significant resistance area. If you look at the 200-day EMA, as well as this demand, um, the support area, I'm sorry, no, the supply zone, right around 21.5K. This is an area that you shouldn't probably be buying at. Um, but if it's going to be like 2019, then I expect this just to continue to run. Um, like I don't expect this to have like any strong pullback all the way down to 19K like everyone wants. Um, that is the area that people would be looking to buy. Uh, and, you know, I don't blame them. 19K would certainly be a solid buy area because at least in the short to midterm, this probably still looks bullish. Like the weekly looks bullish and this short term um, price momentum looks pretty bullish. But whether or not 19 comes comes or not, uh, 19K comes or not, is really the question. Uh, if this continues up higher, uh, I actually have a different idea where price um, instead hit this floor of 30K. And it's probably a little bit easier to see on the three-day chart where you can see that this, you know, my hypothetical 6K level back in 2019, um, this really is more like this, that type, kind of 6K level where price bounced off this 30K level for quite some time. Uh, hit it back into January 21, good retest before making this move up to 60K. Again, remember the summer consolidation in 21, never broke past that 30K level um, on high time frame charts. Well, you know, 29K, whatever, same thing. And then it again consolidated back in May of 2022 before falling out. This might be more of the area that 6K um, that we might expect. So, for example, you know, we might just continue to see this grinding past uh, 24K. And then it might stall out around 30K and then just keep going higher. That would be this, uh, the overall 2019 scenario to me. And I'm not really necessarily saying this is really what's going to happen. I think there's too many levels to break through. And the overall macro environment is just much different. But I think that um, it is a possibility. And as far as how high this could go, I honestly have no idea. Um, maybe it goes up to like mid 30 Ks. I have no idea. Could stall out before then. I think everybody's expecting it to go 30 K, uh, and break down. Uh, but as I said before, there are some levels that it needs to break through now. And it's also just possible that price just, you know, um, just stalls out at one of these levels, either current level right now around 21.5 or just stalls out around 20, uh, around 25 and then just breaks down. 
Uh, it's important to note that the market structure, in my opinion, is still bearish on high time frame charts. So it's it you know you shouldn't I don't think necessarily get too euphoric at this time, but it's definitely something to really just consider um, from the, an overall context standpoint. So. I think that, as I said before, is this like 2019? Hard to say. Macro environment's just quite a bit different. But I think that, uh, you know, if this doesn't really, if this is like 2019, it's not going to provide really much of a pullback. Uh, like you would want that 19K retest, but it might not get to that point. Uh, certainly just could just keep running. But as I said before, the overall market structure still is bearish on high side frame charts. And this is not the area to buy uh, at all, in my opinion, uh, at the daily as I said, 200 EMA, usually this acts as resistance, um, first taps. You can see that it just acted as resistance from the last time it, uh, it got tapped all the way in kind of this May, uh, April, uh, April 2022 and um, kind of December 21 area. Uh, acted as resistance and I expected to act as resistance again, especially with the way that price um, just blitzed up. It was just kind of an inefficient move. So as I said, I'm just staying kind of patient right now. Like I do have spot bags that are, are from lower. Don't really um, just going to keep letting it run. I think that we still have a multi uh, leg run. I am expecting at least 25 K in the kind of midterm. But as of right now, don't really know uh, what's going to happen in the short term. Could you get that 19 K retest? That would be really nice to refill some bags um, and then go higher. But as of right now, I'm not going to be buying. I'd rather buy the break and retest and then kind of go from there. Uh, let's uh, just take a brief look at Ethereum. Um, Ethereum similar to ETH in this, I'm sorry, uh, Bitcoin in the sense that 200 day EMA acted as a resistance. Um, and it gets it gets a little bit close every time too. Um, every time it's gotten somewhat close. It hasn't quite tapped the 200 day EMA, um, but it has broken down right before. Uh, it did get tapped back in uh, April 21, or I'm sorry, April 22 and broke down. And right now we're seeing that it actually flipped it on the daily, which is actually quite impressive to see. Um, generally speaking, though, ETH has looked better than Bitcoin. And ETH, um, I think ETH Bitcoin chart has looked pretty good and pretty strong. Um, but similar to Bitcoin, I don't really necessarily think this is the area to necessarily buy at. I just think that this entire area, um, anywhere from around 1500 to 1700, looks pretty bearish. Uh, would definitely probably wait I think and just I would just wait and and uh, wait until break and retest of this level if this er area does get broken down uh, then I would expect it to run some of these highs around the low two K's I think that's kind of like the next area up um, but you know ETH will still probably run just as Bitcoin does uh, you know, you could maybe make some arguments for um, a bullish mark structure if this area around uh, 1700 does get broken. If you just clear everything away from the chart and just use pure price action, you know, you can maybe mark uh, this as a high. You know, that's the latest high or that's like the last significant high. Um, and if you, you, if you break that high and then you have a higher low, then at that point, I think that you would have like a bullish mark structure. So if you have something like this and then it, it chops around for a bit and then just continues higher, um, at that point, this, in my opinion, would be a bullish market structure. And the first market structure shift that we see, um, uh, bullish market structure shift that we've seen in quite some time. So for example, um, like this right here was a higher low because the last low, in my opinion, was set back in that June, July uh, 2022 period. But what was different was that this was a lower high set back uh, right after um, some of these highs. So in order for it to be a bullish market structure, I think you need to have higher highs and higher lows. You can't just have one or the other. This was just a lower high, and obviously we know what happens next. Price nuked below these lows back in October and then um, went lower. But you know, as I said, we, if, we, if we can break past these highs on uh, around 1700 and then we hit some sort of higher low at that point, I think that uh, this would be bullish in that point. I'm not saying that necessarily bull mar bear market is over at that point point, but just that there is going to be a shift in market structure. Uh, still, you know, a little bit dubious over all that, but we'll just play it level to level. Anyways, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for the support and talk to you guys soon.